All right, tonight I thought I'd try and make a little scoop like this one here that I made a while ago. I've got a nice piece of Nargusta wood, and the proportions that I like on this one actually kind of match this uh, golden ratio. If you look in the middle here, the center line of the handle and the center of the piece of wood are at that uh, golden ratio. This is a little tool I got on Amazon. It's uh, mostly used for doing makeup, but it actually works out pretty well in the wood shop too to get that golden ratio. This is a pretty simple project, but uh, has a little bit of difficulty in how you chuck it up. So what I've done is I've taken uh, opposite jaws off of this piece and I'm only holding it with two of the jaws of this chuck. So it's not the most secure mounting. You have to go slow and be careful, but uh, We'll turn the first axis, I'll flip it around, put it on a jam chuck, turn the outside, then I'll turn it 90 degrees and then turn the handle at the end after I remove most of the mass so that it balances a little better for the higher speed turning. What's really important here is to start the lathe out very slow and just work it up until you start to get a little vibration. Oh, this one's at about 450 RPM, but just be careful, go slowly. Some people don't like carbide tools, but I think they actually work pretty well for hollowing and things like that. This is a little USB powered LED light that I've glued a couple of magnets onto the back of and then put shrink wrap around it so I can clip these magnets to the back of my tool rest to see down inside the hole there. should go without saying on a project like this, but be careful when you're sanding. This thing is a real knuckle buster. Now we need to make a jam chuck. You could use any piece of wood you've got. I have a whole bunch of four inch UHMW plastic that was left over, so I'm gonna make a jam chuck for that so I can reuse it.
If you do use something like a plastic for a jam chuck, you've got to be really careful when you're machining it. This stuff is surprisingly strong. You don't want to let it build up too much where it can grab your tool or grab your fingers or anything like that. So you want to stop quite often and clear the chip, but also make sure that this lathe is completely stopped before you reach in with your fingers to pull this off. Don't take any chances of getting wrapped up in this. It'll break a finger or worse. The next step is to remove some of the mass from the handle so that it swings a little easier and isn't quite so out of balance. scoop tied up against the jam chuck and the tailstock holding it in place. I'm going to remove a little bit of the material uh, from the side of the main part of the scoop. If you've never turned an offset piece like this, you really got to watch out for that handle. You can hardly even see it, but if you hit it, you'll know it's there. still got flats on the sides there so we'll take that down just a little bit more we won't get it to the final size before I do that I'll turn it around 90 degrees shape the handle and then maybe put it back on here one more time and just make sure everything looks good I've got the wall thicknesses that I want all right now we're going to turn the handle axis You can kind of see the material we took off before, so now I'm going to try and turn this section of the handle and get rid of more of this material here. So again, make sure to start it up slow, make sure everything clears. Bring it up to speed.
Again, we're not looking to get this to the final dimension yet. Just roughing out a lot of that wood. I'll flip it back on, take some more of this off, and just kind of sneak up on that wall thickness that I want. I think on this wood, it's a little bit brittle, so I'm going to switch over now to a skew and see if I can get some of those uh, pieces to quit breaking out. Let's see if I can do this with the camera angle. looking a little better. All right, once again, we'll make sure everything clears the tool rest. We'll try and keep an eye out for that handle as it spins around and then we'll shape the bottom of this off a little bit better now. Now that we have a lot of that weight removed, we can spin this up quite a bit faster. Still a little bit more to take off some flat spots there, so we'll cut that back and uh, keep on going. too much farther. I've still got to take this handle down a little bit and I'm just starting to blend that radius in there so I think I'll stop right there. But patience is really the name of the game with this piece. All right we'll uh, pull the tailstock now and do our finished sanding on the bottom of this. We'll go ahead and finish this handle shape now.
to put a couple of bead details on the end of this. Back to the saw, we'll knock these corners off now and then uh, just some hand sanding to blend everything back in and should be ready for finish.